Hello class, thank you for joining me today. My name is Elijah K. Bryant right there, and I am here to talk to you all about the wonders of experiencing aging. Aging. It's going to happen to us all. We might as well get used to it, the concept and the idea right there. But it doesn't have to suck. Let me explain to you some facts and details why. Okay, so the experience of aging. Let's start with talking about the, how the body reacts to it, the body systems, organs, and whatnot. So every organ, every body system, and indeed every neurotransmitter, as time goes on, slows down as we get older. For that reason, in most of our cultures, it is aging often leads to diseases in that card, but that link may be broken. Aging, everyone does it. It's in paramount. Many try to avoid it, but we all can't. However, the rate the organs reserve is depleted. D depends on our habits more than our actual age. Some people are losing more than roughly 2% a decade, but those were for examples of people who were morbidly obese, people who smoke, uh, consumed high amount of calories of alcohol, and who live in highly populated or densely populated areas. They may lose up to at least 10% of their capacity per decade. Uh, another small fact is adults ranging from the age of 45 to 64 find that breathing problems are the fourth most common cause of death after heart failure, cancer, or work or common everyday life incidents. So let's talk about now how aging affects the brain. Right there. Brain with our age. Like every other body part, every other organ, as we get older, our brain begins to slow down a bit. The body, when young, fires up millions upon millions of active neurons right there, firing off of each other. But once our body reaches a certain age, that process slows down. Our reaction time gets a little bit slower. Our motor skills, our cognitive ability becomes into question uh, from the the lack of axon to the neurons are not picked up as quickly by the dentaries of the neurons. New neurons and dentaries appear in some other cases, and some other cases they don't. It's a crapshoot. Neither. For most adults, cognitive reserves, homeostasis, and allostasis protect the brain and neural inhibitors. Genius allows new learning. For example, your grandfather might not be as good as you at playing like Call of Duty and GTA 5 and NBA 2K23 and all the other games that we play for such fun and amusement that we love. But my grandpa might not win at it, but their analysis of it is far more comprehensive than someone that, that's like us that might be young or of teenage years. This is one reason why people in positions like judges and bishops and um, people in the clergy right there tend to be of older age because they find that there is a lot more time and a lot more age, age with age comes wisdom, obviously, but also more depth that comes with getting someone that's older for that type of position as opposed to someone who's young. Yeah. Now, uh, some of the key biological factors that can cause severe brain loss before the age of 65 are drug abuse, lack of circulation to the brain or the rest of the body, viruses like different types of diseases, not count disease, uh, we saw a big spike in that during COVID, genetics, our, our body's genetic makeup, how we're made, traumatic brain injury or TBI which is uh, what you would call things of like concussions, Alzheimer's disease, all things that have to do with a uh, dramatic effect on the brain's body chemistry. The most dramatic evidence we see of actual neural tissue regrowing or being able to readapt 
is from people who are victims of a stroke from age, uh, ranging from age 50, 50 to age past age 67, right there. Yeah, so those people there are actually quite capable of using their brains, can literally be restructured and retooled in order to learn new movements in adulthood that some principle of plasticity because of exercise and experience applies to the brain and all adults. Right there. Uh, lastly, I want to talk about outward appearances and how uh, aging affects our senses. Right there. So as we get older, once again, the body starts to, to slow down and goes down a little bit. Our faces, you might be noticing the wrinkles are setting in, the face line recedes. Uh, for men and women right there, there might be signs of hair loss for males, we call that. Uh, male pattern baldness, the natural color that we have on our hair, like for some people, like mine's now is black, it might start to dramatically change. Some men call that, you know, going gray. Women start to get gray, a little bit older, or completely white in some some, some other cases, and uh, more uh, Caucasian males. Right there. And uh, our body naturally begins to shift in the way it maintains or regains body fat and weight right there, which is why a lot of older men seem to have, like, they have a lot of extra weight in their body right there. It gets harder and harder to keep the body fat mass off right there. And for women, too, right there, works the same way. Whereas their, because their hormones and female hormones are completely different, the body retains water at a younger age, and then it begins to maintain more at an older age. Okay. And how it affects the five senses, that's uh, smell, touch, taste, visual, and hearing. So as far as the eyes right there, people's ink begins to set in and the eyesight begins to deteriorate as well. Like for those of us that have already started to, I'm not wearing mine now, but <laughs> those of us that wear glasses, we might notice it might get a little bit harder for us to see things right there. Not just things that necessarily might be far away, like when we're driving on the road for like to see a stop sign, but for things that might be even just close up to us, like a menu at a restaurant. Uh, the most common cause of that we see right there is the disordered, I guess the disease we call cataracts right there which is a deterioration of the auditory glances and nerves that are behind the eye. Right there. Auditory, right there, which is our ears, how we hear. You notice that an old, an elderly person, excuse me, or senior citizens, auditory might not be as good right there. Even if you're standing within the same proximity of them, like maybe five feet away, and you might say, hey, grandpa, hey, grandma, they might not necessarily hear that right there. It has difficulty, their senses have difficulty picking up that vibration of your voice right there. That's why you see them put in the auditory devices that we call, you know, a hearing aid. Um, sense of taste. So that's right there. As we get older, our taste buds and our senses change and adapt. Our body's always constantly evolving in different ways and taste is one of them. So at one point an elderly person might have been able to, I don't know, had more of a craving to eat, uh, for example, like steak or um, chicken or milk or whatever the case might be. But as time goes on, those taste buds kind of deteriorate and they begin to crave other things, you know. You know the common stereotypes, you know, pudding and applesauce and cheese sandwiches and things of that nature, whatever things might be, we can laugh about. And uh, sense of smell. Same, similar to the uh, auditory senses right there, our sense of smell begins to go a little bit too. They, or get stronger in some people's in very rare cases right there. Like, we tend to be very prevalent around older people when we're taking care of elderly, you know, because if a potential fire breaks out, we don't know if they'll be able to necessarily smell the smoke because their sinuses might have deteriorated since then, since they were our age. And finally, the sense of touch, which mainly 
effects depending on that's un clinically unclear right there how much of our touch sensors are really lost uh, sense of feeling uh, although the bones that are connected to auditory senses like maybe our wrist might have started to deteriorate severely as a we see that in the disease we know we call arthritis so ladies and gentlemen I think that will do it just about covered everything I think I wanted to cover I hope this you find this lecture well I hope it finds you in good physical mental and spiritual health right there for all of our beliefs that we have and you have a wonderful day don't let anyone take your spirit away right there I hope you enjoyed it I hope I did good let me know what you think and as always it's so lovely to speak to you guys thank you God bless and good night